my name is Alice Kent and I'm the advanced bass double bass tutor double bass 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 double bass bass double bass tutor double bass 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 double bass and this is tutorial three of the Paganini in the last two tutorials we've covered playing with a metronome some certain fingerings of tricky bits and matching left hands up with slurrings and we've also covered all the different styles and articulations that we need to look at in our part. So this tutorial is basically getting ready for our recording of it. So we're going to need loads of energy, energy, loads of it. Get warmed up, look through the warm up videos and get your double basses and get ready to play because we're going to basically run through our part. When you get ready to record your part of the Paganini, make sure that you are mentally prepared, you're full of energy, that your phone or your tablet or your laptop or however you're going to do it is fully charged. So many leads, plugs, oh, which one? You're sat comfortably with a good posture, you've got your bow ready, you've got your music all ready, and then go for it. In the last few days, running up to when you're going to do your recording of this, or you're going to play it through, and this applies really to any piece, make sure that you've, got, you've built up your stamina so that you can play through without being too tired, or without seeming as though you've run out of energy mid-performance. A good rule of thumb for solos is being able to run a solo repertoire, let's say for an exam or a performance, around about three times. If you can do that, then when you come to the actual performance or exam, you'll be ready. So, we're going to play it through. Make sure when you're running it through, you have your metronome ready. And be really strict with yourself. So, let's go from the top. So we've covered everything in the Paganini. The only thing is for you to really practice at home. The best things to do with practice are to use scales. I say every time, use your scales. If you can play the scales of a piece, if you can play the key, whatever scales in that key relating to that piece of music, you're gonna find this a piece of cake. You're going to find preparing a piece of music a hell of a lot easier because nearly always there'll be some sort of scales in the piece that you're learning. So if you can play your scales, you can approach music quite easily and quickly. And it also means that your facility on the instrument is better. I also like making a list when I come to practice. A bit like a shopping list work through it and a tick off. I might even put how many minutes I want to spend on certain things. It might just be a bowing and I might just keep doing it for five minutes but I'll stick the timer on and then once I've done it for five minutes I'll say yes I've done it. If it's all becoming a bit tiresome go and have a break, have a cup of tea and come back to it fresh, refocused. Try playing this piece through a few times now. Anything that becomes slightly tricky, keep going, don't stop, keep going. But remember the moments that you will need to go back over 
and readdress and repeat. And I re recommend with this piece in particular, going back over tricky bits with a metronome, making sure you're absolutely in time. I cannot wait to see these performances, especially with the improvisation section that you're going to come up with. It's going to be incredible and I just can't wait. It'll be like Christmas in May. I hope you enjoyed the tutorials. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye!